In this video, I'm going to discuss the attributes of the macro flash. Generally, there are two types of macro flashes, a ring flash and a dual-headed or twin light flash. Let's talk about the ring flash first. Well, in general, ring flashes produce a broad, even light across the subject. And that's really because, as you see here, they have uh, rings of light and they're generally two tubes, one on each side of the flash head. And you can see in each one of these, they have uh, that characteristic. There's a tube right here on the METS on either side. And it's made to create a broad, even light. And they're generally um, easier to learn to work with than the dual headed flashes. And we'll get into those uh, in just a minute. But in general, they have a broad, even light, and they produce a nice soft light as well. On the lower end of the price point spectrum with ring flashes, there's an offering by Sigma that's very popular. And it has a little bit less control than some of the other, a little bit more expensive offerings that I'm gonna talk about. Um, in that, you can't independently control the power output from side to side. It's either the uh, flash tube on one side is on or off and you can turn one side off and leave the other on or one side off and leave and turn the other off uh, on. And um, so it is a very popular offering and produces a really nice light but it has a little bit less control. If you want to have a little more control, there are offerings, and you can see them at the top here. This one is by Nissan. Um, the middle one is by Canon, and the bottom one is by Metz. The Nissan solution works for Canon or Nikon. Um, you can buy one for either, and you can control the power of each side independently. So you can not only turn them on or off um, independently, you can also vary the power output from side to side independently. And the Canon solution, of course, that just works for Canon cameras and you can do the same thing and they both, the Nissan and the Canon, produce great light. Um, the MET solution is kind of a little bit different, um, not that it produces a, a worse quality of light, it produces a very good quality of light, but it's a little smaller and less bulky because there's no piece that goes on the hot shoe of your camera like you see right up here on the Nissan and right here with the Canon solution. This little ring um, attaches to the end of your lens with an adapter as do the others here um, but there's no hot shoe component. It's all controlled through the um, internal flash controller of your camera and that's a feature that I talked about in a previous video on, on the camera bodies. So you can control the output by side, you can even swivel the flash head somewhat which is pretty cool and provides um, pretty fine control. The other type of flash solution for macro photography is called a twin light flash. And of course it's called a twin light flash because there are two flash heads like you see here in the upper part. This is a Nikon solution and this is on the bottom a Canon solution. They're both really, really good uh, flash heads. I would say that um, the twin light solutions are for people that are a little more comfortable with their camera systems in general. and. Um, because there's a little more to them and there's it takes a little bit more practice to get them to work right but they have much finer light control than um, than the ring lights do so one of the things that they have and ring lights can have this too um, but it's a, uh, a target focus light and you see that in these little red rings here that I've laid over the flash heads. Both the Nikon and the Canon solution have them. So you can look through the viewfinder and move the flash heads with those lights on and you can see exactly where the light is going to fall on your subject. So that's it helps you to aim the light much much more precisely. Um, another component is that the flash head swivel. So not only can you um, aim the lights but as you do that you can swivel them um, you can swivel them back and forth to to provide light control and you can move them around the ring as you care to do that so you can really get fine fine control 
The other thing is, um, as I mentioned on some of the ring light offerings, you have uh, fine independent control of the output on the flash head. So you can put one in group A and one in group B for either the Nikon or the Canon solution and vary the power output. And what that does is it creates a little bit of shadow detail and that um, helps provide more surface detail of the tooth material that you're trying to, uh, to highlight. So it really can be a finer control, uh, light control method to use a twin light solution, a little bit more advanced, a little bit more to get used to. But once you do, um, it can be a very, very powerful, powerful lighting tool. Another thing you might notice here is on the Canon solution, there's a piece that goes on the hot shoe of your camera with cables connected to the uh, flash heads on the end that go on the end of your um, on the end of your lens. On the Nikon solution here at the top, it's wireless, so you're controlling the flash head output from the internal flash commander of the camera, which has a lot of benefits. One is it's less bulky, um, it's lighter. It's uh, just easier to maneuver and, and hand, handle. And you'll see that I have the in this illustration or this image, the uh, camera's on-camera flash popped up because that can either be powered off to a point where it just provides enough flash to fire the heads and not influence the uh, image, um, or you can use it as a third light if you choose to do that. So there's a couple of uh, couple of benefits to the Nikon solution that you don't have with the Canon solution, but they both produce great, great light. The next thing we're going to talk about are my dental photography bundles.